So V of R should be exactly equal to zero whenever R is less than zero. Okay, let's then figure out if the positive part of this proposal works. We only considered a case where R is equal to one, and we know that V is equal to one is the appropriate value. So let's consider two cases when V is less than one, uh, when R is less than one, greater than zero, and when R is greater than one. So let's first consider uh, this case when R is between zero and one. So just to draw this case, R is less than one means let's look at the definition. It means the difference between ui and ui minus one, a uh, big difference between ui plus one and ui is less than the difference between ui and ui minus one. So the slope is higher on the left than on the right. So ui, ui minus one, and ui plus one. So this is the case when I have r between zero and one. Okay? So the question is, when I want to reconstruct the solution at i plus half using ui minus 1 and ui, how should I guarantee that the solution would never overshoot to the existing maximum or minimum? The proposal we had before, the blue proposal, is whenever i is greater than 0, which is the case, we are performing a linear reconstruction up to here. Would that guarantee a non-increasing local maxima? No, because the ui plus 1 could possibly be a local maxima, right? So in this particular case, phi equal to 1 actually does not guarantee monotonicity. In this case, phi has to be less than what? R well, it's it's not easy to figure out. Actually, let me let me write the condition here. So the reconstructed value u at i plus half. I think I used the red here. Uh, u i plus half left is equal to u i plus u i minus u i minus one divided by delta x times delta x over two times phi, right? Okay, and this has to be less or equal to ui plus 1 for monotonicity reasons. Now, if I look at this inequality and move that ui to the right-hand side, what we get is ui minus ui minus 1. These two delta axes cancel. We get over 2 times phi is less or equal to ui plus 1 minus ui, right? And uh, we, mod we divide this on both sides to get the inequality for phi. We get phi is less or equal to 2 times ui plus 1 minus ui divided by ui minus ui minus 1, which is exactly 2r. So phi has to be less than 2r in this range. Uh, if I draw it, if this is half, 2r at r equal to half is equal to 1. And uh, this is the upper limit for what phi could be within this range. All right? Does it make sense? OK, so, so this part doesn't work. This part could still work right, in your proposal. All right? So, so this part of the domain, I can't be. So this is what this says. So I, I already know less than zero, I have to be less, I have to be exactly zero, and I have a slope of phi equal to 2r, I have to stay underneath. And at r equal to one, I know I have to be phi equal to one. So, so the other case is when r greater than one. So for r greater than one, we have you, uh, conditions we want to satisfy is uh, the so-called symmetry of the flux reconstruction scheme. When we try to compute, uh, so phi of r, so 
so when we multiply phi of r times ui minus ui minus 1, we want it to be the same as phi of 1 over r multiplied by u plus 1 minus ui. So that gives us a symmetric scheme. That is, when we flip, when we flip this x-axis, so this is a this is symmetry because if we consider, sorry, if we consider the x-axis to go that way, and if we look at a scheme that is, if we look at a discretization that is has i grid point here, i plus one grid point here, and i minus one grid point here, so this going backwards, we are still going to have exactly the same type of reconstruction. Here r, remember r is defined as ui plus one minus ui over ui minus ui minus one. So if we flip the axis, if we flip the i plus one and i minus one, r becomes one over r. And uh, uh, ui minus ui minus 1 becomes ui plus 1 minus ui. So, so we should have a flipped over. Uh, we, we, should, we should have the symmetry means if we flip things over, uh, the solution we get should be equal. I think there may be a minus sign somewhere. But like what this tells us is that what this tells us is that uh, ui. <laughs> Okay, what this tells us is that if you divide both sides by ui minus ui minus 1, what we get is phi of r would be equal to r times phi of 1 over r. Right? And if we have in the range of r goes from 0 to 1, phi is less than 2r, that translates into the case when uh, the argument of phi is greater than 1, because if you take a r in between 0 and 1, 1 over r is greater than 1. And if phi has to be less than 2r, when r is in between 0 and 1, so if this is less or equal to 2r, it means when, it means when 1 over r is greater than 1, phi should be less than what? Should be less or equal to two, right? If you so there is an r here, there is a r here. If you divide on both sides, it means phi of one over r has to be less or equal to two. So there is another line that caps the value of phi when r is greater than one. So this is the region where we are gonna get monotonic schemes. All right. But here's the question. If I keep phi equal to 0 all the way, is that good? It satisfies both phi of r less than 2r and phi less than 2. What requirement does phi always equal to 0 not satisfy? It also satisfies the criterion that phi is equal to 0 when r is less than 0. Yeah, it doesn't satisfy that phi has to equal to 1 when r is equal to 1, and that is for second-order accuracy, right? So choosing a phi always equal to 0 is actually going to get us a monotonic scheme. But it doesn't have second-order accuracy. It's first-order accurate. And it turns out if we analyze the criterion for second-order accuracy, we get two more regions that we cannot be in. These two more regions are if you draw a straight line or so this is phi equal to 2r, this is phi equal to r. If you also draw a line that is phi equal to 1, the two additional forbidden region is here. So we cannot, if phi goes into here, we don't have second order accuracy. We also don't allow phi to be in here. So if phi is here, we don't get second order accuracy. So the only region we can get both a monotonic scheme and a second order accuracy is within this region. Is, is for phi greater than 1, 
phi has to be oh it's for r greater than one phi has to be greater than one and less than the minimum of r and two so for phi less than one less uh, for r less than one greater than zero phi has to be greater than r and uh, less than the minimum of 2r and 1. So these are the two criterions we have to satisfy for a second order and uh, a monotonic scheme. So now we can start discussing several possible choices. Do you have a question? Question here? Okay. So the first choice is the most is the one that gets us to second order accuracy while being as close to the piecewise constant reconstruction as possible. What is that? Remember, phi equal to zero means piecewise constant reconstruction, right? Not using the slope at all. So how do we get second order accuracy being the green region while be as close to phi equal to zero as possible? No question we have to trace through this zero line. In this region, I can't be state zero, but I can stay at r phi equal to r. While in this region, I can stay at phi equal to one always, right? So the this is called the mean mod limiter. So mean mod of r has three pieces. It can be zero. It can be r. It can be one. <laughs> It's zero when r is less than zero, and uh, it's r when r is less or equal to one, greater or equal to zero, and it's one if r is greater or equal to one. So that's the first type of limiter that is going to give us second order accuracy and monotonic. There are also other limiters. For example, the other extreme is to stay as high as possible, right? It's the other scheme using the green one goes like this. It stays zero still. Any working limiter has to stay zero for r less than uh, zero. Then it traces the upper limit of the allowable region. So instead of three pieces, it has one, two, three, four, five pieces. So this limiter is called a super B. It has five cases. It is either zero, in this range is two R, in this range is one, in this range is R and two. So it can be zero or two R or one or R or two depending on if r is greater than 0, or r is in between 0 and half, or when r is between half and 1, and if r is between 1 and 2, and r greater than 2. All right, so this is tracing the upper contour of this allowable region. And you can see that both type both mean mod limiter and super b limiter so this is super b they are piecewise continuous they have many discontinuous pieces and that is in sometimes is not the most desirable behavior for different for differential equation solvers when people want uh, as little uh, non-smoothness as possible in their discrete solver they usually choose something in between that a line that goes smoothly over all these regions and stay in the allowable region always uh, this type of the first type of this uh, uh, limiter is constructed by van leer and uh, uh, it's also so this limiter is called the van leer limiter it is only it only has two pieces again it is zero when r is less less or equal to zero but when r is greater than or equal to zero it has the same function uh, 2r divided by 1 plus r 